At 649, the Treasury Department says the government has weeks, not months, until it runs out of money to pay its bills. Missing those payments would be a major blow to the U.S. dollar and likely trigger a global economic collapse. Amy Liu is in Washington. With Destiny and Patrick, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy are at an impasse over tying a debt ceiling increase to spending cuts. That, as the Treasury Secretary now says, a default could come sooner than expected. The pressure is, is mounting and intensifying, uh, and it should. A showdown over the nation's debt ceiling well past its $31 trillion limit. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen making the deadline official, writing in a letter, extraordinary measures taken to pay government bills could be exhausted as early as June 1st. We're going to agree to balance the budget in 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, some time frame then I think that's absolutely doable. House Republicans passing legislation last week to raise the limit with deep spending cuts. With no chance of passing the Senate, the pressure is on President Biden and Speaker McCarthy to reach a deal before deadline. Most important thing we have to do in that regard is to make sure the threat by the Speaker of the House to default on the national debt is off the table. The clock is ticking, Speaker McCarthy said in a statement before the problem turns into global economic fallout. A default as soon as June 1st gives Congress little time with just eight days this month in session to pass a compromise. This is not uh, the way to do things, uh, to hold the entire economy hostage to your political agenda. President Biden said he would not negotiate until Republicans proposed a budget. He is now inviting top Democrats and Republicans to the White House next Tuesday. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu, WIFF News 4. Gun rights advocates are asking the Supreme Court to step in on assault weapons bans in Illinois. They're challenging both the city ordinance and state law. They say Illinois courts are ignoring last year's ruling that expanded Second Amendment rights. Both the federal district court and an appeals court declined the request for a preliminary injunction from a rights group, gun rights group that is, an Illinois gun shop and its owner. Monday's emergency application was submitted to Justice Amy Coney Barrett. The Supreme Court has agreed to hear a major case on limiting the power of the federal government. The justices will hear an appeal from fishermen challenging the government's authority to make them pay the salaries to government monitors who gather data aboard fishing boats. Sure. It means that they will reconsider a 1984 case that sets factors to determine when courts should defer to a government agency's interpretation of the law. It addresses everything from public health to immigration. That case will be heard next term with a rule with a ruling likely in 2024. Just ahead of what's expected to be a busy summer travel season, the labor union representing American Airlines pilots has authorized a strike. The Allied Pilot Pilots Association says they could begin picketing at major airport hubs <clears throat> nationwide, although no timeline for when this might happen was announced. They say a strike will only happen if terms for a new contract can't be reached. Meanwhile, pilots from Southwest and United are also demanding new contracts with their airlines. The Southwest Airlines Pilots Association says their pilots began voting on a strike authorization yesterday. The start of the year has been good for Amazon, but not as good for thousands of its workers. The e-commerce giant reported a profit of $3.2 billion in the first quarter. That's a huge jump from the losses it took a year ago and far exceeded analysts' expectations. Amazon predicts that the year will only get better from here. The company says the layoffs are to streamline costs. Managing artificial intelligence is becoming a top priority for some nations as the technology rapidly evolves. Members of the G7 Digital and Technological Ministers met Monday to come up with a plan for using AI responsibly. The ministers oppose the misuse and abuse of AI in ways that could undermine democratic values and threaten human rights. They also agreed to set up a new agreement to promote data-free flow with trust. Their plan will be discussed at the G7 Summit later this month month. And check your tickets. A $100,000 lottery ticket was sold in Anderson. Lottery officials say the winning ticket was bought at the 7-Eleven on North Highway 81. The Palmetto Cash 5 ticket matched all five numbers drawn on Saturday, April 29th. And those numbers are on your screen. 2, 5, 19, 25, 27. The power up, 3. The winner has 180 days from the date of the drawing to claim their prize. 
Some exciting news in the WYFF4 family. Former president and general manager Mike Hayes has been promoted to president at WYFF4's parent company, Hearst Television. Hayes served as president and GM of WYFF4 from 2003 to 2011. Last year, he was inducted into the South Carolina Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame. You may remember him from the many editorials he did for us. While in South Carolina, he was very involved in the community. Mike was chairman of the Greater Greenville Chamber of Commerce, vice chairman of the United Way of Greenville County, and the Urban League of the Upstate. We could not be more proud of our friend, colleague, and former boss. Congratulations to Mike. Now he's the big, big boss. Yes, he is. <laughs> Congrats, Mike. That's so awesome. All right.